<laughs> Sounds like he swallowed something. <laughs> Maybe he's coughing up a hairball. <laughs> Jeez. Whoa. This is what house cats will be like in the future after the great improvement. Oh, he took a, took a minute off. This is um, what you sound like when you're writing. Uh-huh. So, Henry, you make animal it noises. It sounds like an old man snoring. You make animal noises when you're working. Uh, you can tell probably by our witty repartee, light banter, <laughs> uh, and the sounds of uh, what is it, tigers, that this has to be yet another installment of the uh, Henry and Heidi podcast. My name is Henry Rawlings, and sitting next to me is... Heidi May! Hey! Hey! And so uh, it is time for yet another podcast. And so... The way we do the podcast, wonderful podcast listener, is Heidi tees up a topic and we check it out. So, Heidi, you have one prepared? Yeah. And uh, are you ready to let us know what it is? Are we going straight into that? We don't have to. Um, No, we don't. And so, um, is there anything you'd like to bring up? (laughs) No. We didn't go out to eat today. I did. I know. But, so we don't have that drama. Let's see, has there been any drama in the last oh, few days? Oh, there's been drama. There's drama we can talk about and drama we can't talk about. <laughs> as far as, uh, boy, I don't know what drama we can talk about because it's inner workings of showbiz in a highly litigious town. Uh, we're not oh, in trouble. yeah. But there's, yeah, there's stuff that's uh, yeah. off the record for now. Yeah, well, that's not very fun for the audience. No, but... Uh, but it's, uh, all, it's borderline rude. Okay, fine. We can say one thing, though. Okay, go ahead. Um, we've gotten offers to do the podcast live. Okay, fair enough. We have, and we're considering it. That'd be on stage. I'm urging Heidi to do it. Um, you know, Heidi's thinking it over. I'm Me, nervous. I, I'm, I'm ready. I just, cause I just know it'd be super fun. And I know that audiences would have a good time, but more, most importantly, I know that Heidi would enjoy it. Uh, she's she's thinking it over. I I'm hope, nervous. I, well, that's okay. Fair it's enough. Scary. It's okay to be nervous. I just don't think it's my opinion that soon as you get out there, you're gonna have a really good time, and it's gonna go really well. And super important audiences will have a good time because that's you're all gonna, I really. That's because the only you're reason, gonna be having a good. The time. only reason I would do it is if everyone had a good time. Yeah, I just want people to have a good time. If you come around. And are into it. I think it's going to be. We'll a start blast. doing. We'll start doing them on the weekends. There you go. So Heidi. Unless you want to do a full bus tour, Henry, could you imagine? I don't know if I could survive you <laughs> on a bus. You day survive after day. me. I think it's the other way around. It's my bus. My it's 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 no, my world no, no, on no, a tour no, bus. no 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 no. If the Henry and Heidi podcast go on tour, yeah. it's our bus. No. Oh I, yes. Oh yes. No. Yes. Of yeah. Course. I mean yes, but no. Yes. No, Period. I mean, yes, because it is 50-50. <laughs> that I'm completely on board with. But no, because we're going to have to like stop the bus because it's raining and there's a hair issue. <laughs> or we're going to have to have wardrobe because Heidi has vintage denim concerns. Yes, I do love vintage it's, denim. There you go. But, and there's all that stuff. Would otherwise, it's probably, probably going to be uh, Mr. K., our bus driver, probably going to be Angel, our merch guy, and probably going to be road manager Ward, our tour manager. And then there's going to be you. Uh, Basically, four utilitarian men who are happy with waking up in the clothes they fell asleep in and going outside and eating whatever, wherever, and going about their day. And then there's going to be Heidi May. (laughs) Henry, I'm low maintenance. (laughs) Oh, wow. 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 No, no wow. wrong, wrong wow. statement Henry, of 2019. Henry, whenever we've had to travel together, who's in the lobby first? Heidi. Me. I, Heidi. Me. You, you have admitted. Uh, you have said to me, I'm work. <laughs> you so are. Yeah, yeah, you're making, you make it sound like I'm work about wardrobe and stuff. I wear jeans every day. Uh, uh, I don't care about that. Yes, but jeans that like, <laughs> like there's one pair ever seen since 1428. I uh, like a vintage Levi. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, you kind of do. Whatever. Uh, Heidi, right. no, I'm all with it. It'll be great. I'm just saying. And yes, it's going to be it, a learning curve when it's for the men on the bus. Or muggy out. Yes, my hair ends up looking like Richard Simmons' hair, and I'm not into it. <laughs> I'm being honest. <laughs> so, there's that, and whatever Heidi has as our topic. 
well, Henry, I thought today would be, it would be nice to talk about your pal, Skip Groff, and yesterday and today, records. All right. Uh, a huge man in my life, just so uh, all, the, all, all the listeners know, uh, Skip Groff, owner and operator of the great Yesterday and Today Records, located at 1327J Rockville Pike in Rockville, Maryland, right outside of Washington, D.C., passed away in March of 2019 at age 70. And previous to punk rock, I bought records, but was completely reactive to FM radio. You hear Walk This Way on the radio, as I did, you save up your money and you walk to the record store and for $4.99, you buy the record. You hear this song, you buy the record. They come to the, your local arena, you see the show. And so those were records I bought now and then when the single attracted me. It wasn't like, I can't wait for the next Aerosmith record. I didn't know when it was coming out. I, I had no knowledge. I didn't treat those records all that well just because records weren't a thing you i really looked after they're just this thing i bought five times a year if that punk rock single-handedly changed all that and turned me into someone who takes perfect care of records or tries to but it was going to skip Groff's store that turned me into a record collector how old were you when you started going there that would be 1979 when ian mckay and i figured we better start checking out this punk rock stuff. And <clears throat> I honestly forget how we found out about Yesterday and Today Records. I think it was Ian, because ear to the ground, going to a school with a bunch of brainy uh, kids. He probably figured it out and said, hey, I found the store where we can find the adverts, the clash, the sex pistols, on and on. And so he was 17, I was 18. So that would be Unless it would be late, no, I'm wrong. It was late 1978. Skip opened in 77, I, I believe. So right after he opened, we're, we're in there. So I would be 17, Ian would be 16. So he, he had a car, so it would be after he turned 16 in April uh, of 77, so 78, he'd be 17. I'd be about to turn 18. Something like something thereabouts, 78, 79. How often did you guys go? After the, we went in the first time, directed by this really cool punk rock book by a woman named Caroline Kuhn. It's called 1988, The Punk Rock Explosion. It had pictures of all the bands and write ups. So we would take that book and go, a band called Eater. Well, we better check them out. Who is this, who's this band? The Adverts you know, from England with like three records out. How do you find their records? This guy Skip has them. So we take the book and go into Skip's and go, okay, oh, look, that's a, there's the Buzzcock spin. Well, look, what is that record? Okay, we'll get that one, that one, and that one. And so we took the records home, Buzzcocks, adverts, and something else, X-ray specs, something, put the records on, jaws hit the ground. You're like, best music, and this is us. We got to get back to that store. Okay, school, ah, can't go back till next weekend, but I work on Saturday. Okay, we'll go Sunday. Sunday became our day to go to Skip's. Interesting, like yeah. every Sunday? Like it was religion. I love that. Because you couldn't wait for that Sunday to get to Skip's and get the new installment in the coolest story ever. Would he recommend things to you guys? Kind of, sort of. He would gently steer us. He was a little older than we were, came from a different era of music, but he has one of those brains where he could literally kind of memorize everything in the store. So as far as being hyper conversant, Beatles, Birds, uh, FM Rock, anything from Britain, from like, you know, Yardbirds, uh, The Kinks, etc. He's backwards and forwards. Sex Pistols clashed punk rock, yeah, but he was just kind of walking into it himself. So Skip had a really great way of helping you expand your record collection. I'd come up to the counter, hey Skip, we just met him. Um, can you play this record? No, just just, just get it. <laughs> in, in those days, 
an import single, three bucks, was basically an hour's pay of standing on your feet doing something really repetitive and not all that interesting. So it, that record had to be really good. Well, well can you play it? And he goes, yeah, you're going to love it. <laughs> and he was like, as he said that, he's also hysterically funny because he's super smart and super dry. And he would just, he'd be kind of gently insulting you <laughs> at, at, at almost all times. And Ian is a very quick study. Ian picked up on it and and within four visits, we were pals of Skip. You realized you're going to be friends with him forever, that you're going to be going into that store forever, that this music was forever, and that you, you know, it was going to change your life, which it really did. And I'm, it sounds like I'm being hyperbolic. No, this... It really did. Yeah. And Skip was the guy. There's, a, there's other record stores in town, good ones too. But Skip was our guy. And to get to other record stores that had stuff like Skip, you had to drive quite a ways. And Skip was kind of our first blush at this, you know, first crack at all this. So he was our guy, easy to get to. It was like one street, Wisconsin Avenue, which we, Ian and I lived like, you could hit it with a rock from our houses, turns into Rockville Pike. So you get on one street and you go. You make a left and then a left and then a right and you walk into the store. That's it. So you, you couldn't have made it any more simple for us. And so it became Sunday religion. And so immediately Ian and I, you know, we, we see anything, we kind of start poking at it. You know, we're young, we're upstarts, and we think we're so funny. So almost immediately, we rename Skip Groff Skint <laughs> Crofts. <laughs> K-R-O with an umlaut, who, just because it looked funny, F-T-S. And so we'd say, hey, Skint. He's like, excuse me? Skint Crofts. He's like, who's that? You? And so, hey, Skint. And so I think Ian started pretending to shoplift. He would take, you know, 10 John Denver records, put them under his T-shirt, say, well, Skip, see ya. He started making towards the door. And uh, Skip would say, uh, Hey there, pal. Where are you going? Oh, just going home. <laughs> or he would put up a, a couple of singles on the counter and fish out about 35 cents. He goes, well, there you go. <laughs> Until next week, he's like, come back here, buckaroo. <laughs> and we, it just became this thing. Did you guys hang out there for hours on a Sunday? Or Sometimes, you... yeah. Uh, it just depends on, you know, levels of homework and what time we got there. Because... As it always happens or often happens with a record store, the record store is more, so much more than the place you buy records. It is where you hang out. And another guy comes in and he goes, well, you want this record. It's it's really great. Or someone else comes in and he goes, oh, why are you listening to that? That's a waste of your time. This is where you want to be. And then that guy confers with Skip. And all of a sudden, all this information that's new to your ears like as these two guys are swapping lies at the cash register and you're just kind of watching like it's a, a, a verbal tennis match. Like, you know, and you're picking up information and it's all so interesting. And of course, like, well, then what's this record? Yeah, just get it. Ah! <laughs> and so Skip became our very good friend. He's just a great guy. And as I'll tell you, as we go, more and more, he became more and more a part of our lives at, at the same rate of speed as the music because he was the conduit. We went to other record stores because we're hyper curious. Ian and I with a car, forget it. I mean, we, we covered square inches of the earth looking for records just mile after mile. And all those stores were good, all of them. But Skip had the flavor also. Skip would go on these now legendary buying trips to England. He'd go to London, get a hotel. He rough trade, um, whatever that really hip street is, where the the markets and you know, the tape the traders and everyone's out there. Uh, and he's just wheeling and dealing because he came from radio. The guy would buy twenty thousand records at a time, like some warehouse. Hey, we found some records. I'll buy them. Do you know what they are? No, I'll, I'll take it. Here's like, you know, a good price. Let me back my truck up. And he would buy the whole damn thing. So he understood bulk. 
there's kind of nothing about the record industry he didn't understand because he he went soup to nuts through the radio industry from like a guy to a, a popular DJ. I mean, he really understood the mechanics of the music industry. And so he would go on these buying trips, Portobello Road. He went from Portobello Road, rough trade shop, on and on and on. The sellers with the cool, rare records. He'd come back with, I guess, suitcases. I don't know how he transported with not a few records like weighed down. And so he'd get back on the weekend, shower up, come into the store, usually on a Sunday. Ian and I would be out there for like a 10 a.m. opening. We're there about 9.30. And for teenage kids, that's a lot of get up and go on a Sunday. Yeah. But we were hyper motivated. Why? We're not the only per people interested in records, punk rock records. So there's, everyone knows Skip is coming back. It's a small community. And so we have to be the first. Are you kidding? We must. And at... 9 59 58 seconds our little noses were pressed up against the glass <laughs> and skip going all right and let us in and we would descend upon the singles boxes like ooh, 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 read about this one who's this looks cool put it in the stack and um we so you would... bought things just off the way they look sometimes yeah you had to because think about it no internet we're not reading the music newspapers. Skip, skip got them. And Skip wouldn't play them in, nah. the, in the shop for you? Uh, just, just, just buy it. <laughs> this one looks cool. Sure it does. Can you play it? Come on. You're, you're, a, you're an, an adventurous listener, Henry. Oh, come on. <laughs> and so um, Skip saw in me, collector, I'm forgetting what record it was, but he pulled up two different picture sleeves of one record, like the British one and the, the German one, Buzzcocks maybe, a lot of different picture sleeves with that band. He went, this is like the German one, this is the British one. I'm like, they're different, but it's the same single. He said, yeah, different territories often use different artwork. I was like, oh, 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 oh. And Ian, I'm uh, sorry, Skip must have seen it in my eyes. He went, oh, Henry's one of those guys. I didn't know I was a record collector. Skip said, this happens. I went, I'm a, Okay, and that's an obsession that's only gotten for me. It it's like so a he he really is the one that planted the seed in you. Oh, he started it. I had no concept of that because I come from buying the Aerosmith record. Right. You know, like well, the British pressing t sounds better, huh? I I don't even, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking right. about. I got this because it's five dollars. Skip turned me into <clears throat> a collector and one who wanted to know about every aspect of the record business, how you make a record, how it gets to me across the ocean, when it's gonna come out, how to be there, you know, like then pick up Enemy or Melody Maker and read up. What's, what are those here? They would get to skip a week late because you know they're coming over the ocean. And so it was for Ian and I, quite a revolution. But let me backtrack just for a moment. This whole, just, just buy it, Skip was unwavering. Finally, Ian, Ian. Ian, you know, he's irrepressible. He would just go behind the counter and put a record on. <laughs> and uh, Skip would just, you know, Skip totally got us. And I think he enjoyed our company because we were loyal. I'm sure he did. Loyal. And we love the guy. And he's like, uh, what are you doing over there, Ian? He's like, nothing. Just, you know, putting on a mu some music for the store. And as Ian's like not digging the record and putting it back, saving himself an hour of pay. And so... The only person in my experience of going to Yesterday and Today Records who broke Skip Groff and made Skip DJ to sell records mm -hmm. was a man that you might be familiar with named Jello Biafra. Yes. Uh, Jello and the Dead Kennedys were in town, and I think for a show and to hang out. And we had met Jello months before when the Teen Idols went to California played San Francisco, and we all met Jello <clears throat> at a Dead Kennedy show. And so, nicest guy. And we all got along like a house on fire. You know, you have records, and we, you know, give him, you, always you give him your record. And so, Jello probably has like 80 million records that every punk band in the world has said, please take my record. He kept them all, I'm sure. Anyway, Jello's in town, and we take him to, we took him to haagen Nice. Got him some ice cream. <laughs> And then we put him in Ian's 1941 duster 
and we made the pilgrimage out Wisconsin Avenue to Rockville Pike to 1327J. And Jello Biafra, then as he is now, is a very recognizable person in the music world. But when you, you're the singer of some band called the Dead Kennedys, and you're Jello, who's, you know, very charismatic, people don't go, who? <laughs> it's, you yeah, know it's who Jello. Jello. Yeah, it's Jello. <clears throat> so we bring in Jello Biafra, and we're feeling pretty high and mighty because we're walking in with Elvis. Jello was in your car? I mean, it's stuff, it's like that. Yeah. Because we're small town. That's so exciting for yeah. everyone, though. And there's like 20 people in the DC punk rock scene, and we've got Jello for the afternoon. <laughs> anyway, we walk in, and Jello, you know, he's just one of those guys. He's large and in charge wherever he goes. And he walks in and meets Skip. Hello, I'm Biafra. I'm in town for a minute. I remember he called himself Biafra. I'm Biafra. I'm like, oh, he calls himself by his last name. Should I do that? I mean, like, <laughs> what do you know? Uh, I'm Biafra. I'm here for a minute. I want to see your psychedelic records and anything that's weird and, and, and. And Skip gets to work, starts pulling out singles boxes. Je I, Ian and I would shop on a minimum wage budget. Okay, maybe this one. I don't know. Are we gonna get? Am I gonna get three records this weekend or two? Uh, top ramen noodles. I'm okay. Let me ask you this: Did yeah. you buy what Ian didn't buy, and Ian bought what you didn't buy, so you guys had everything? Exactly. Oh, good. But I was the one who liked what Ian was hearing and would buy it for myself the following week. Oh. Ian knew like he could always borrow mine. So if you know, we would two advert singles. Ian would buy one. I'd buy the other. Next week, I would buy the one Ian had because I loved the band. Ian wouldn't necessarily buy the one I had unless he super loved the band. Stiff Little Fingers, The Damned, we both were buying those. Other bands, he'd check it out, I'd check it out, but I'm I'm that guy. I'm the collector. Yeah. And I have to have it all. Ian, he's not attached to things at all like I am. I have to have one or five of all of it. And so... We've never seen anyone shop like Jello Biafra. He's pulling out records. Okay, just it looks interesting. He's just making these pancake stacks of singles, like eight, nine, ten. I said, you know these bands? Like, no, but it looks interesting. <laughs> Texas, 1968. It's going to be great. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and the, another guy with a massive brain. And like, he looks at something, he'll never forget it. He's fascinating and a music know a lot he really is a big maven on the music he comes up to skip with these like two inch stacks of like punk rock psychedelic 60s this he's jello's into kind of everything in the record store uh okay uh play these and i'm like oh what's skip gonna do and Skip kind of, uh, okay. And you can see this is not how Skip <laughs> runs the show. Biafra's there in his trench coat going, okay, here's how it's going to be. And Skip starts playing him. But I don't think like fast enough for, for Jello, who just wants 20 seconds, 20 seconds. He's making these decisions like, okay, fine, put on the next one. And you see Skip going, put on the next one. <laughs> you're you're issuing <laughs> just, it's so not happening i love it and so finally jello just takes over and for the next hour or so you get this crazy 30 seconds of that a minute of that 10 seconds like oh no and, and where jello took over the turntable and we're, we're just watching skip and skip's like what okay skip doing just watching records get sold this is 19 80s money so when someone plunks down a few hundred dollars for records now you're like eh you know how many records do you get three I mean, it's nothing those days with how much money we were earning jello this is coming from a different kind of economy i mean those shows he's those they did thousands of tickets a night we had you know no idea and so jello had a few dollars and you know guy likes a record it's not like he's driving a a, a Maserati, he bought records. That's, right. where, that's where his yeah. thing was. That was his priority. But hanging out at Yesterday Today with Jello, watching Skip submit <laughs> was... Because I never saw that happen again. And I'm not necessarily remembering any other, quote, rock stars being... Certainly, like, the dam did in stores there. There's a great photo online of Dave Vanian... 
our good friend Lydia Ely, and I think Ian's sitting on the counter next to Dave. Uh, I, I was think, just going to ask you, did I you think that's, that's online You somewhere. and Ian probably went to all the in-stores. Um, I went to all the in-stores while I was there. Remember, I discovered yesterday and today with Ian, late 78, early 79. Oh, right. But by summer 81, mm-hmm. I'm gone. Yeah. And so immediately my visits to yesterday and today became hyper sporadic. I'm on tour with Black Flag. We get to town and it was agreed upon. We we drive up from North Carolina, no sleep. You get in at like 8 a.m. We parked at, who, I forget where. I immediately call Ian. Like, Ian, I'm here. It's 10. Er, picks me up, same car. Where are we going? You know where we're going. We're going to Skips, of course. Like, where else would you go? We're here. We go to Skips. That's what you do. I'm not exaggerating. Haven't eaten in two days. Got to go to Skips. I got twelve dollars. I've saved up miraculously. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy some records, and so that was my relationship with Skip changed as soon as I became like a touring guy. But before we go any further, this is super important. Before I left for Black Flag, I made a record. It was Discord Two. So the second record on Discord. The first one was the Teen Idols, I-D-L-E-S, Ian's first band, Pre-Minor Threat. Ian didn't want to look for a label. He didn't even, in those days, you don't even know how to audition yourself. Ian wanted to start a label. How do you do that? Skip already had a label called Limp. And we were buying local DC releases on Limp from Skip. The ah. Slicky Boys, White Boy, these local bands that, he was the guy at the record store had the hookup. So Ian said, so I want to put out a record. Skip said, no problem. Here's a studio. You give me the tape. I send it down to Nashville, wherever the pressing plant was. And it, uh, you pick a color. You can pick a color. Yes, you can. Whoa, potential. And the record will come back in whatever amount of weeks. No way. Yes. We, just, we had no idea that this was even possible. Who made records? Led Zeppelin. Not you. Right. And like the local bands, we don't know them, but like we, we can do it too. And Skip went, absolutely, I'll help you. Like he was a real, you know, he's a good, good man. And he just saw our enthusiasm. I think he really saw that we were like, our tails were wagging, you know, really into it. So Teen Idols makes their first record. Skip produced it. Skip helped Discord start. So... Uh, now it's time for Minor Threat, SOA, my band. SOA makes a, a tape that Skip produced, a demo. You know, in, in nine minutes, we made the demo. The songs were 40 seconds each. So we go in, same studio, Inner Ear, where Ian works to this day. That's so cool. Like Ian was in there this year. I mean, Ian's in there every year. Ian was introduced to Don Zentera, owner of uh, Inner Ear, by Skip. It's one of the most relevant relationships Ian has is with Don Zentera. How many records did Fugazi, Minor Threat, etc. make in there? How many records has Ian produced in that studio? Is that the only studio he's ever recorded in? No. No, no. He, Ian's recorded internationally, but that's his go-to. And Don, one of the, the finer people, he's just, he's amazing. Skip hooked that up. So if you look on the back of my little record... I think it says produced by Skint Croft. <laughs> and I great. don't know if Skip was all that overjoyed. <laughs> but you can't tell the story of Discord without Skip. Skip was the guy who hooked it up. It sounds like it all goes back to Skip. It all goes back to Skip. And so it, the more you think about it, the more you go, oh, it was him. Not that one, that one, and that one. It for Ian and I, it was Skip. He brought us to the music. He helped start Discord. He made us see that we could make a record. And a guy like Ian, he's so switched on. He connects dots with great speed. Once he saw I can make a record, his, his next thought in the same breath is we can make records. Like I can help that band, that band, and that band. That's Ian's ethic. He will help. And, you know, make it, he'll clear the path and go here. There, go, there, there you go. Your turn. And I'll help. And Skip is so much of the Discord story. And so 
he's like this major guy in our lives and someone I kept in touch with. But just another kind of beat. Um, one day I was working down the street from yesterday and today at a job I had, uh, like five traffic lights, like two miles. I would go to yesterday and today on my lunch hours, get my car and jam over there and hang out with Skip. You know, some, some me time with Skip, just, you know, daytime, which was, you know, rare for me just to be able to jump out and jump back into work. And Skip would say, you like the band Generation X? I'm like, oh, yeah. He said, okay, so let me show you something. And he pulls out the single for Dancing With Myself. Great song. And he goes, did you know in the UK, there's a promo version for the industry, but then there's the radio version. And in America, there's another radio version. I think I'm right about this. So there's like between two or three versions of Dancing With Myself, white label, and printed on the label, not for resale. I'm like, well, then is it for sale? He goes, yeah, I'll sell you a copy. Yeah, good. take it home, you'll love it. <laughs> I go, well, how did you get it? He's like, well, you know, because he's hooked up. And I said, well, what are these? He goes, these are promo copies. I go, what does that mean? He said, Henry, there's a whole other record network that the consumer doesn't see the records that only radio stations get. And he pulls out something else. This has this live pretenders cut that's not gonna be released, but you'll be able to hear it on the radio. But it comes from this promo LP that Sire put out to get listeners interested in the next pretenders record. It's a live version of whatever. I'm like, whoa, whoa. So there's a whole other, he said, there's a whole other thing happening. And I'm that guy. I want all of it. He went, well, okay. And so he saw in me this eager student. Yeah, you were thirsty. Oh, I, I just you would have jumped in his lap. Tell me more. And so I would go to Skip's. And I'm a young adult. I got a car. I'm living out in the world. I'm working full time, like a real job that you, know, that you can get easily fired from if you screw up. I, I left high school. I'm, I'm graduated. I'm kind of an adult. I would drive to Skip's after work. Could it be like... 4 35 p.m and kick it with skip because everyone's in traffic going home this place is pretty empty a couple of diehards and me and i would just go okay well what about this and skip would go okay here's how this works and oh this just came in uh from the damned it's it's expensive it was their giveaway single worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars henry this is it's 20 bucks i'm like ah that's a day's pay he's like but you're never gonna see it again and that's how he sold me, and he was, he was right. Well, not until the internet. But he sold me the, the damned marquee giveaway single, in immaculate condition, much sought after now. And the Cramps' second single, Lux Interior, hand-painted the logo on the sleeve and the light bulb over their head in the photo. He said, 20 bucks, I know, ouch, but the proverbial hen's tooth. I went, ah, he said, Henry, trust me on this one. So I already had the single. I think I bought it from a Cramps roadie at a show. I went, okay, it's one of my prized records. And the, nowadays, that's, a, that's an expensive record. Not always in the best condition when you find it. My second ever test pressing I ever had, besides the Teen Idols test pressing, was the Adverts legendary album, Crossing the Red Sea. Um, he brought back from one of his buying trips a test pressing. And he said, Henry, the Adverts, a test pressing with the original artwork, but with the picture sleeve, but not glued together, like you unfolded. And I went, wow. And that was like a day and a half's pay. That thing now is worth so much money. Not that I'd ever sell it, but as far as scarcity, you know, like, you know, $30, $25, something monumental. That's a lot of money to a kid in those days. But I followed Skip's lead because he's not trying to rip me off. He, these things He's cost. trying to lead you. He's leading me. He's, yeah. Because he saw that I'm someone who's, super values this stuff. Mm -hmm. If you said to Ian, adverse test pressing, he go, oh, that's cool. He says, that's, that's, that's not who he is. Me, I'm all about it. And so I am a full-time vinyl obsessive. I write about it. Yes, uh, you are. Yes, I am. It was Skip. It's not Skip and, and, and. It was him, period. Yeah. And, you know, I... I I had great affection for Skip within 20 minutes. You can't not like the guy. He's just great. He was obviously a mentor. Oh, huge. And 
such an important part of the DC music scene. Like, that band has a record out? Yeah, he put it out. Oh, he put out a legendary record, which I believe Discord is going to re-release at some point, called 30 Seconds Over DC. And oh. it's this band, this band, this band. We put we, it out. We put that out. We put it out on CD. Yeah. Oh. Ian's going to reissue on vinyl. Oh, good, yeah. good, and, good. And it's all been mastered. It's it's ready to go. So, oh, I and, love that. Yeah, and I, I ended up with the tapes of that because we needed to master for CD. Mm-hmm. Ian came out here a few Coachellas ago, and I said, he said, 30 seconds. I said, it's all right here. Put it right back in his hands. He brought it back to D.C., and it's with him now. I just saw the artwork recently. They, they've... Um, Re, kind of tarted up the artwork it looks fantastic oh good i can't um, wait the original guy who made the artwork has like repainted it nice kim kane i believe of the slicky boys has redone it i've seen the original wow doesn't even begin to describe it that was one of those records that made you aware that your town your city has a thriving music scene these are all pre teen isles pre discord bands that they're great but who put out that record skip put out that record He's the one saying, hey, we're happening. This scene, the 202, 301, and whatever other area code, 703, is in the mix. And here's the proof. That was Skip, a self-starter. And then he made a second record with the bad brains on it and on and on. And This is incredible. Yeah, he's a mover because he comes from, he knew everyone in the music industry, but he knew radio and he knew like how the sausage gets made. You want to get someone to come to your show, you got to make a record. You got to get it out. You got to get it to radio. Skip was the guy doing all of that. So he's multitasking. So Yesterday and Today Records was so much more than a record store. It was a meeting point. It's where you got the edumacation. It's where you got your culture. It was a record label, Limp. He helped bands find producers, studios, because he worked with more than just Inner Ear. And he helped other, like there's so many people he helped, like I think he helped get one guy, Tommy Keen, local guy, very good. Uh, I think he got Tommy to Electra Records. I mean, he, you know, he hoed, I think one or two bands upstairs to the majors. Such was his dedication and, and to music and savvy. Oh, he loved music. I mean, he obviously he through was a fa- he was the he was your first fanatic fanatic one. Yeah, he ground he like he it's, really it, was. It's him, and that is why, as you have been tortured over the last several months, reading, having to hear the music writing as you and I are editing, um, every other page. Skip, 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 yeah. skip, skip, skip. I mean, he's. I talk about him on the radio show. He's yeah. in the first three Fanatic books. Yeah. No, we're editing your Fanatic, Stay Fanatic books right yeah. now. And we got word that Skip passed. Yeah. Um, a few weeks ago, we got word that uh, Skip passed away uh, in his wife's arms, uh, the great Kelly. It's a great way to go. Great way to go. And um, he, you know, okay. So Skip is gone. And so they had a memorial I was lucky. I was in the country. Lucky I was not stranded on location. And there's no way I'm not going to go out for that. So I flew to Washington uh, on a Thursday. Got there a little after midnight on Friday. That evening, Kid Congo's birthday party. Lucky. Get to see Kid Congo play. Forget it. And then Saturday, hang out with I'm so jealous about that. Oh, they were so good. I'm so jealous. Oh, they were great. Kid's looking good. He's so, so great. And then Sunday, I check out of the hotel at 11.15, meet Ian, and we drive. This was so perfect. The memorial was held right off Rockville Pike, about a mile past yesterday and today, which is now a restaurant. In fact, it's the second restaurant. Yesterday and today, as a record store uh, with a door, closed in September 2002. I was there in February 2002, and I was there visiting, and I'm in there taking, I had my camera, luckily, I'm taking photos of everything. And Did you know it was going to close? Skip said, hey, uh, okay. the lease is up, it's five years at a time, the, the rent, the price, ah, I'm, not, I'm just not doing it. The internet. Yeah, I can the do, internet probably destroyed well, him. I can do, well, I can do it from home. Oh. You know, warehouse it, and in those days, eBay and 
YNT.com or something like that. So he says, I'm going online. In September, the store is closing. I said, skip. I don't know what my schedule is. It's February. But if I am able, I am going to be here with you on closing day to bring this thing home. Yes, sir. And he went, all right, well, if you can make it, great. So luckily, I'm in Florida working on Bad Boys 2 as a microscopic part. And they said, okay, uh, we're going to might have to hold you a couple of extra days. I'm like, if you hold me an extra day, I'm going to miss Skip. They didn't have to hold me. I jammed up from Miami to D.C. like the next afternoon or maybe that afternoon. I forget. It was close. I jump in Ian's car and we make like the last trip out to yesterday and today as we said we do. And we walk in and it's and I, I brought the camera. And it's Kelly and Skip loading boxes of, of records. The flyers and posters are off the wall. The the bins are, are empty. It's just boxes of floor. How did you feel? When you... I was gutted. I didn't know that it would hit me that hard. I, I walked in and kind of did that thing where you're like, I think I'm going to start crying. Like someone hit me in the solar plexus. I was like, Skip, uh uh, I was kind of speechless. I'm like, whoa, because it hit me. This it's weird is when you have a physical reaction ending. to something. Oh, yeah. it, I had to hold on to something. I'm not exaggerating. No, I believe you. It really shook me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Skip, whoa, whoa. And he's like, yep. How that, was he on that day? Really matter of fact. Okay. In fact, Ian remembered Iron Steel Trap memory Ian has. He said, do you, the other day when I saw him, he said, do you remember you, me, and Kelly are loading out book, uh, uh, sorry, records to that U-Haul truck. Skip was on the phone making a deal to buy a 50,000 record collection. He wow. was wheeling and dealing as we're loading the records out. I went, I don't remember that. He said, trust me, it happened. And so we spent a couple of hours loading out records, doing photos, group shots together kelly took photos of the three of us i took photos of of ian and ian and skip and skip just kind of looking out the window i was trying to capture him reeling in the years and it was just what we stayed until the the darkness almost came upon us that we're moving little color xerox in the window i took it you know yeah come on the store's closed he doesn't need it anymore i took it with me i still have it and we drove out of that parking lot and it was like, wow. I said, Ian, I, I, I feel really depressed. He went, wow, that's, uh, you know, Ian's not given to emotional displays as much. But I'm like, this is, this is heavy. He's like, yeah, yeah, it is. Like, are you kidding? That's our guy. I went, yeah. So it was heavy. It doesn't describe it. And so I have made multiple trips back to yesterday and today on Google Maps. Oh. Uh, you know, as you can do, mm-hmm. you take a little trip down memory lane. You, I think, you, you visit your old apartment too. Oh, I, I, I bounce yeah. around the old neighborhood routinely. Mm-hmm. And so a Thai restaurant took over yesterday and today, and at some point they quit. So on the way to Skip's Memorial, Ian says, and look to your left, there's the strip. There's what used to be yesterday and today. And without a word, Ian hit that U-turn because he had to make a U-turn to go back in the other direction because he's across the street from... Hit that U-turn, you make a left for the U-turn, you bang a right into the parking lot. I went, yeah, one last time. And we went in there and I had the camera out and took photos of the restaurant, took, took a photo of the sign that says 1327J because it's, it's 1327 J, get it right. And we just kind of stood there and went, man, and to, and okay, and now we're going to go see Skip. Like, we did it right. And we drove from yesterday and today to the memorial. That was so right on. Yeah. And that's Ian. He just hit that turn, yeah. man. And we went to the memorial. Guy Pachotto drove down from New York. Uh, Howard Wolfing of a great band called The Nurses. He now does PR. He came down from Philadelphia. I mean, people came in. Uh, Bert, Roberto Quiroz, early Discord guy, flew in from Scotland. I mean, you know, the respect is 
in the house. And um, beautiful memorial. Um, I spoke, Ian spoke, an uh, old f- radio friend of, of Skip's who knew him like from the 60s, he spoke. Um, a couple of people who bought records from him, you know, just got up to speak, open mic. A little uh, montage of photos and uh, uh, I'm in some of the photos. Ian's in a bunch of the photos. Because, you know, Ian, Ian worked at Yesterday and Today. He worked there for years. So he has, I mean, he spent time with skip i mean he might know skip as well as anybody and so it was really fun some laughs when i spoke i said yeah skip helped me with my record collection by you know not letting, <laughs> like, and everyone kind of went, yeah i know and i said uh after we made the record skip took me out to lunch big congratulatory lunch the mcdonald's across the street and a few people <laughs> few people clapped and i said the fact that i got a big mac out of skip and people were like yeah he's, <laughs> you know he's he was you was know he notoriously he was, cheap just frugal he's frugal <laughs> and i i remember back then going like can i get large fries he goes yeah get anything you want i'm like oh, oh, oh boy <laughs> you know the big man is laying out the spread and so um uh that happened and so the service was great ian was great he's like super funny because Ian, you know, Ian knows Skip really well, had great stories. And the hangout afterwards was really cool. A bunch of people who hadn't seen each other in a long time just got together and said, hey, man, you know, we love this guy. Yeah, you guys celebrated him. Yeah. And um, then I got in, as I, I hated to do it, as I always hate leaving, I got in a car, went back to the airport, and by around midnight uh, Monday morning... I was back in D- L.A. thinking about Skip. And so that was that. But um, when we got news that Skip had passed, you and I had just come back from a meeting we had. And you said, are you okay? I went, yeah. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Life is life. It ends sometimes. So that was day one. In the evening, I wrote I wrote Ian. I went, wow. He went, yep. Wow. And so that was night one. You know, I just kind of, you know, thought about it. Night two, the ceiling got a little lower, mm-hmm. the room got a little smaller, and the l- little bit of room in the room was full of thoughts of Skip. The third night, it's like a Friday, I was on my own listening to music. It was as if not a truck was landing up, dropped on my head. It was like a, a 20 ton cloud went motionlessly somehow dropped on me and slowly crushed me where it hit me like whoa it's him discord recording session collector fanatic it's skip it's one guy and that's when it was it really hurt that we had lost this guy I mean, you know, you... I, I felt like it was going to hit you because the way you acted when it first came in, you were in shock, I think. I don't think you were had digested it. No. Because, and some passings, obviously, everyone's different. If it, it affects the person getting the news differently, but the person who passes away, how they pass away. If it's young, a car accident, you're like, ah. Yeah. But, you know, skip out of life. 70 is good. Um, it, it was like, okay. And I had been thinking about him and his health. So I'd spoken to him a few months before and his health wasn't good. And so I was thinking about him about two days before going, Skip, hmm, I wonder how he's doing. And then so when I got the word, I wasn't like, no way. It was not exactly surprising. I mean, he was in the hospital. He came home from the hospital and passed away soon after. I, last time I spoke to him was at Discord House. He was in the hospital. And we were talking about records. And so um, this, it took a few days for, for all the dots to connect. Because we're talking like 40 years of association where the, ma- it's the magnitude, that's the word, that where the magnitude hits you and you're like, whoa. And you're glad you're sitting because you would have found the floor anyway. And so heavy doesn't begin to describe it. But... Had a lot of fans, sold a lot of records to a lot of people. A lot of rock stars went into that place. He was a go-to. A lot of touring bands like we're going to Skip's because, because Skip had the goods. 
And so one thing I, that you don't know that you should know, Skip was, had the incredible memory. He would memorize not only all your lyrics, as cringeworthy as they could be a year later. <laughs> he would memorize... Did he love needling you with that stuff? Oh, <laughs> he would memorize your more dumb quotes from interviews. You have to understand, in those days, suddenly, you're a kid from the neighborhood, but there's a microphone in front of your face from the Washington Post, Channel 7 this one, that one, and that one, and then fanzines, and then the LA Times, and, 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 and. You're a kid talking to real publications. So you're saying the most self-righteous, I mean, <laughs> like you want to cringe? Read my interviews from those days. <laughs> Ian did not escape the completely intact. Me, I lost every limb on my body. Are you kidding? Boom, this is just like, you're like, oh, please. <laughs> And, you know, Ian has a few, you know, just you're like, Ian, you said that? Yeah, let's keep walking. <laughs> Me, I, that was like every fourth thing out of my mouth. You'd walk into the store and and I, I reminded Ian about this. I think it was Ian who said, if you mess with us, is it was the Washington Post interview. I think it was either Ian or I. I think it's Ian. For the purpose of this podcast, it was Ian. <laughs> like, you mess with us, it'll be 10 on one until your ears bleed. And that was said in like 1980 to someone from the, to someone at the Washington Post by a teenager who hasn't done anything yet, you know, in the in the world. And you'd walk in, and like 10 years later, he would say, "Hey, it's good to see you guys. You know, if you do this, it's going to be 10 on one." Like skip, <laughs> skip. That's I, my kind of guy. And I said that to Ian. And without even dropping a beat, he said, one time I'm talking with Skip. And he said, Ian, you know, we're all in the waiting room. <laughs> and Ian said, yeah, I, I, I guess you're right. Oh, <laughs> shut up. Because he just had this elephant memory. And I have emails from him. <laughs> you know, Henry, sometimes you're going to have to fight, which is a, <laughs> I'm like, Thank you. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. Never going to walk it off. I love it. And Skip would just pull these things That's from like great. the depths. Like, Skip, everyone's forgotten that but you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. And the, every single time, quip, quip, quip. That's my kind of guy. Ah, and he'd always remind you, since you're a recording artist, I'm giving you 10% off. You're like, yeah, thanks, big guy. <laughs> And, you know, he had a very healthy web uh, presence on Discogs and eBay. I bought records from Skip from the office online until months before his death. I mean, like last year, not this year, but last year, I was buying records mail order from Skip all the time. So I was a customer until the end. I get the invoice 10 percent i'm like i know and i appreciate it. it's a three dollar david bowie ashes to ashes radio promo i mean they're kind of common but you know oh if i'm gonna buy it if skip has one for sale are you kidding I'm you should buy it from it. skip of getting course. it from skip and um i did that whenever i could whenever i saw that he was one of the sellers of course home team and so nothing but fond memories of skip but you know super sad that he's gone but you know he left a legacy. He and, left a legacy. And a lot of fans, and he had a lot of fun. I mean, those guys used to, Ian used to drive him crazy at that store. And Guy, Guy Pichotto, who's one of the smartest people, member of Fugazi, Writes of Spring, One Last Wish, Happy Go Licky, one of the smartest people I've ever met, and also one of the funniest. He just has that lightning intellect. Brilliant lyricist. He worked at Yesterday and Today, too. Ian and Guy together... Why didn't you work there? Because I, I left for Black Flag. I. But why didn't you work there instead of Hagen Dazs? Well, I have an answer. I loved my job at Hagen Dazs. My boss Steve is. We still keep in touch. I was kind of getting over scooping ice cream. It had been a year and a half, and I was doing like forty, sixty hour weeks because I have to cover because I was a head manager. I'd cover other people's shifts. There's not a lot you can learn about scooping ice cream after the first 20 minutes and it's then a flat line of yeah. minimum wage existence had black flag not happened i know very truthfully that i was gonna call skip 
and say, hey, man, can I work for you? Because, you know, same pay, but records, new job. He was always looking for somebody. We knew each other for years. And, you know, I, I can rock a cash register. I knew the store inside out. And I can take training. And so I was probably would have been employed by late summer 1981. Well, I can't guarantee it, but there's a good chance I would have been working for Skip by August of 1981. And you know me, I keep showing up. Who knows how many years I would have stayed. I, who knows? Maybe you would have bought it. Like that. I mean, I... I well, my boss, Steve, was trying to, he said, you know what? We should franchise the haagen and put you, he said, I'll put one in a shopping mall, like the White Flint shopping mall, and you'll run it. I'm like, okay. He was going to have me meet the corporate people in New York. It's like, hey, this is a guy I want to bring into the fold. Let him have a shop. You know, I don't own it, but I would be, it would be my shop. He said, Henry, you can do this. I said, I know, because I, I can do it. Inventory, cash, deposit, ice cream, I can do it. And so that would have been me, but point I'm making is Guy and Ian with Skip man I don't know it's not even like work oh it's not it's not even fun fair I mean fun (laughs) oh if if you're Ian and Guy for Skip Guy was at the thing uh this little uh get together on on uh Saturday before the memorial and uh he was talking to Ian he said remember that time we're packing up records to go to some you know distributor some like you know big 25 count LP box and I found a pair of Skip's underwear and I said so Skip I'm putting these in and like that's typical gee like I'm, I'm packing these right where Skip is like all right sit down where like, you know he just like, they no doubt drove him nuts in the best way yeah hey Skip we bought ourselves lunch at McDonald's cool right like from the cat like, and Skip's like yeah. and so Skip was loved he had tons of friends bands loved him you know, uh, okay, he had a super loyal. I wish base when I wish customers. I would have met him. I don't know why when we were in DC, I, we didn't go. Oh, it was already never mind. Long it was gone. already closed. Yeah, he moved, and Ian, you know, Ian keeps up on relationships. He's so good at it. I get out to DC, you know, for a visit, and he goes, "Okay, we're gonna do it," which means we're gonna drive out like an hour. He mo- skip move way out because mm-hmm. warehouse space is cheap. Mm-hmm. He had that many records. He moved to like way out in Maryland. He said, we're going to do it. It's like a 45 mile drive or something. And we would always drive out to Skip to hang out with the man. Good. And the last. Aren't you glad you did? Oh yeah. Are you kidding? And the last time I saw Skip was at his home. Thankfully, I brought the camera. Uh, His wife was there. Kelly was there. Took photos of the three of us. I took lots of photos of Ian and Skip and Skip and Ian. And um, I still have those photos. In fact, I, I believe one of them might have been used in the montage. It was definitely used on rollingstone.com. Oh, cool. Because Kelly has it. Nice. And so um, Ian made sure, because Ian saw Skip pretty regularly, but Ian made sure I saw Skip whenever I was there. Good old Ian. Yeah. He it's always because does of the right Ian, thing. Because, you know, he's not close. Yeah. Where he lived is not close to anything you're going to do. And if I'm on tour, I, I got to go to soundcheck. And so Ian facilitated me seeing Skip. Like the last four times or three times I saw Skip, one or two of those were at Skip's. He came to the 930 Club for a couple of shows when I was emceeing, when I was performing on, and I saw him there. But the last two times I think were, and that's Ian. He keeps it going. Yep. And so um, it's sad, but we have so much to be thankful for. And in that February of 02, there was a Nico flyer from one of her shows at the 930 Club. I would always see it. I want that flyer. So when the the store was going to go away, I said to Skip, I said, can I have that Nico flyer? He said, sure, there's a ladder in the back, you know, to put up other flyers. So that thing had been up there for years. Nico had, like, was, had, been, had passed away, I think, in that time. Don't, don't hold me to that. Anyway. I climbed the ladder, took the flyer down. It's with me now. I looked at that flyer for years. He had the damaged poster of Black Flag on his wall for so long, the damn thing faded. Because <laughs> he's loyal. That's I, my friend Henry. I love that. Yeah. That's great. So, um, you know, a, a great man who's a, a big damn deal 
to the DC music scene. You literally can't talk about DC, the DC independent music scene and not mention Skip. He's that integral to it. So pretty cool. Yeah. Oh no. It's, it's, it's not music to my ears. Actually it kind of is. I have records that sound like this. You sure do. I have a, I have a lot of records that sound like this. <laughs> I probably have the limited edition lathe of a record that sounds just like this. Stop it. Just so you know, um, my last conversation with Skip, we talked about limited edition colored vinyl and distro differences in pricing. Perfect. Perfect way to end it. That's yeah. a perfect way to end it. So, wonderful podcast listener, if you're not inculcated into this show already, um, the sound of the jackhammer means it's time yet again for Heidi's Headline, which I am compelled to read in a Ted Knight voice. That's the reference I'm trying to make. I love the Ted Knight voice. Thank you. Heidi has a sesame seed on her eyelash. (laughs) You're so weird. And turning the the green index card over, Henry forgets to tell her. Yeah, tell him what you did. Tell everyone Uh, what you did. Let's see. You don't remember? Uh, it came. Did it? Did it come off your? No, we were in. We went. We went and ate. Yeah. A long lunch. Yeah, and somehow we went and, and we did other chores. Yeah. We came back to the office hours later. Hours later. And you said you have something on your cheek, and I picked it off and I looked at it and I go, "It's a sesame seed," and you said it was on your eyelash at lunch, which means it hopped off my veggie burger. Right. Landed on my eyelash. Yeah. You saw it. Yeah. Didn't say a word. Huh. For uh, Henry. Now, here's the big question. From your cheek <laughs> to your finger, did I eat the sunflower seed? I don't know. Did you? It Probably. Was, it was a sesame seed. And I don't know. But when I, I've told you this in the past. If I have something on my face, tell me. Like, don't let it go for hours. Oh, yeah, that was on your eyelash when we were at lunch. What a weirdo. When you have salsa dripping down your face and all over your shirt, yeah. I always say, uh-huh. Henry, look at your face and look at your shirt. Yeah, I'm pretty good at noticing <laughs> stuff. Yeah. And not saying anything. Well, <laughs> You know what? Next time you have a giant chunk of salsa on your chin, I'm yeah. not going to say anything. Okay, fine. I'm just let you walk around with it. But listen. Yes. That sesame seed could have gone in my eye and sprouted. <laughs> Heidi. It's, it's, Henry, if it was going to happen, it would happen to me. Yeah. And you know that. Hey, Heidi. Can I, can I ask, can I tell you something? Yeah, but you don't have to raise your hand. Oh, okay. Um, you, you have uh, two things on your face. Eyeballs. That's right. <laughs> they're, they're huge. Henry's they're, been real mean to me about no, my eyes. Like, they're, they're Henry, you, said, really you told me that my eyes are getting bigger. That's they're, impossible. They're, they're getting bigger. Your sockets don't change. I, I, you know what? If anyone can do it, you can do it. No. No, they're getting bigger. No, <laughs> they're not. Yep, pool balls. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Wonderful podcast listener. Thank you so much. My name is Henry Rollins, and, and my podcast mate is... Hey, May. And this has been another podcast. Thank you so much for listening. We very much hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. My headphones kill me. Oh, no. They Was it too loud? My, no, they pinch my head. Well, the, that's understandable <laughs> because the light bulb head, I mean, those are made for people. You're supposed to be able to put those over a motorcycle helmet. For like wind, wind tests and stuff. But on your head, they're too tight <laughs> because you have a 100 watt <laughs> light bulb head. You're so sweet. Thank you. Yes. And you want me to go on stage and be okay. You'll be fine. All right. People from the cheap seats will like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like what are you doing with the eyeballs? <laughs> yeah, no, it'll be fantastic. Oh my God. You're a turd. <laughs> Thanks. Ah! Ow! Ow! <laughs> Ow!